Hello, my name is Daniel Arben. I am the filmmaker and prop builder uh, behind Hawker Film. And today we're going to have a little closer look at uh, some of my prop guns and uh, models. So it should be fun. So this is our MG14 uh, Parabellum. Uh, this is a completely scratch built uh, model. This is not made in as much detail as the Lewis gun, uh, primarily because I hadn't really intended this to be too much in close up, uh, so it, it doesn't require the same level of detail. Um, I'm actually thinking of maybe going to, for some tighter shots on, on our, our German observers, so I might have to revisit this a little bit, uh, tidy up some of the detail. Um, it's actually been a little bit broken since, uh, since we filmed, but uh, I'll catch all that as well. But the basics of this uh, is actually made from uh, a drain, piece of drain pipe, plastic PVC drain pipe that was, uh, had the, the holes uh, routed into it. It's, it's a plastic PVC uh, barrel inside and the rest is mostly made up of foam and uh, foam, little bits of wood and, um, and a few bolts. The, the end here, <laughs> not particularly accurate, that's just a little bit of, a, of, of electrical conduit at the end. The mainstay of the, of the body is a, a piece of 4x2 timber which has been uh, added with uh, some strips of foam and balsa to, to provide the detail. Uh, same with the stock, it's just, it's just really um, made out of a solid piece of four but two with the handle, uh, handle screwed onto the bottom. I don't put triggers on them because someone's always going to have a finger in there, you won't see it. And also actors are very good at pulling off triggers. <laughs> So uh, I don't even bother. Um, but yeah, it's just given a, a given a coat of coat of black paint, and then and then the the key with a lot of painting uh, black metal is 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 the chrome is the chrome highlighting just to just to catch the edges. It gives it a, a real metal look on camera where where the black has been worn away. So any areas that would have have seen a lot of wear. Just those little little dry brushing with some some chrome paint really um, really gives it a nice uh, worn look. So these are uh, the uh, the rounds here are very much anachronistic. <laughs> they were um, they were they're like five pounds off eBay. Modern disintegrating kind of prop. Um, they're obviously not right for the period. Um, you can't see it in what I'm filming at the moment, but if we do go tighter, I'm going to have to relook at these and, and get a fabric, um, a fabric belt for it, and also paint the tips uh, silver, make it more accurate to the to the time period. Uh, but yeah, that's our that's our MG14 Parabellum. The Lewis gun was a was an interesting one. This was. Um, I, I bought a, a vacuum formed kit from America and um, had it delivered. Um, it was a little bit disappointing as a kit and um, I think the main weakness of it, it, it was really, there was not a lot, all, all of this area around here uh, is not included in the kit um, the, and, and a, lo a lot of it is not a lot of detail so I did use the vacuum formed as a basis but probably if I did it again I'd probably um, just go from scratch to be honest I, I, I ended up changing it so much the the drum uh, is is very good uh, for the vacuum form that's a that's worth it in itself I, I, I would really have struggled to make that from scratch but um, yeah the um, what I ended up doing with the vacuum form kit because it's it's got very, very round edges. This whole area, I, um, I just chopped off the vacuum form kit and made it again out of foam and balsa, a little bit more detailed. 
Um, the same with the um, the rear sight. Uh, I, I made that entirely out of balsa again because th there was just no detail. This specific model of the Lewis gun is as close as I could could find. There's a, there's a huge variation um, uh, in in photos online. This was a largely taken from uh, the shadow that appears in in the photo of Hawker's machine. Uh, so I tried to replicate that as much as possible, but from that shadow you can make out that this is the style of um, of foresight that's that's been used on it. But it was actually a Mark I Lewis gun that was stripped of its its jacket. Uh, it's not to be confused with the the later ones, later aircraft version that were more similar looking uh, than than the Mark I infantry version. This this is a pool cue. Um, this is a piece of wood. A lot of this is all um, plumbing bits. Uh, the the muzzle I I turned from scratch on my lathe. Same with the foresight that was uh, that was turned on the lathe. But this section here, where I actually cast this out of um, of a, a, a polyurethane resin and then turned that down uh, on the lathe. The Hawker mount. It, it's really quite difficult to work out exactly um, how it was done. The the closest I could find was just the very very grainy photos that are, are all online. But really, I just had to make a, a kind of guess as to as to how it was made and what I've done. It it, it could be similar. It, it could be nothing like it. But it certainly there's nothing about it that couldn't have been done at the time so it could have been that way it, it may have been completely different and yeah that's that's pretty much it one of the interesting things I found was this um, what I presumed was a rear sight that had been attached to the strut which seemed to appear in uh, one of the photos um, so I, I made something uh, as similar as I could and, and mounted it to the strut and when I mounted the, the gun itself in as kind of close to mimicking the, the photos as possible and first sat in the cockpit, I was delighted to see that this lined up almost exactly with the foresight um, from the natural position of sitting in the cockpit. Uh, which lends, leads me to believe that this definitely was... Um, a, a rear sight because there's no way that um, the, the rear sight here would have, uh, have been um, in in the right place for the natural head position. Also, I think the um, the angle of sight is quite a deflection from the the line of the barrel, which which must have somehow taken into account the speed he was flying at. Uh, and the angle, uh, um, the difference in angle that he was firing at from the direction he was flying, um, the trajectory of the bullet uh, would no doubt have arced and and would have been taken into account with this um, with this sighting. It was obviously a, a hugely <laughs> complicated way of sighting it, uh, which is probably why it took him so long from when he first mounted this gun to when he finally got um, got the success. Uh, on the 25th of July. So some folks have been asking uh, for a little bit more detail on our models. Um, I'd love to do a, a full um, video about the, the VFX side of things. Um, I'll do that at a later date, I promise. Uh, at the moment we'll, we'll just take a, a quick look at the actual models themselves. Um, certainly the, the Albatross here. The albatross in question that were shot down on that famous um, day were actually albatross C1s. Unfortunately, there are no C1 um, models of a large enough scale that um, that would work for us. So the closest is actually the the B2 here. That is a, a Wingnut Wings 32 scale um, that I made last year from the kit. Um, in many ways the B2 is actually more similar to the C1 than the C3 is. 
Um, the main difference with the B2 and the C1 was that they switched the observer and the pilot. So in the B2, the, the observer sat at the front and the pilot sat in the rear, just like, um, like the British versions, the B2. But what they did was by reversing them to uh, a more later style, uh, by putting the pilot in the front, allowed the observer to mount the machine gun at the back with a, with a full range of, of fire uh, to provide a level of defence um, against people like Hawker um, trying to shoot them down. So um, the other big difference, um, well, huge difference, was they upgraded the engine to a, a slightly larger engine, uh, which in turn, uh, which isn't on this model, um, added another couple of radiator grills there to accommodate the, the larger engine. But in many ways it's, it's quite a similar model and, and was the one that I decided to use for our test shots. I think since we've released our trailer a few weeks ago I've actually decided that I would like to build a bigger uh, version of an actual C1. Last year I ordered uh, the plans to a 1.6 scale C1 uh, which is the plans that were built for the BBC series wings. 1.6 um, is, is definitely too big for me um, but 1.12 I think would work well. It, this is 1.32 so a 1.12 should be uh, quite a lot bigger with a lot more detail, but it's not too big for manhandling ag against the green screen. But it will be big enough that what I'd like to be able to do is actually have movable ailerons, ailerons and uh, a movable rudder and, and tail feathers uh, in order to, to get a little bit more uh, realistic movement and, and again cut down on the amount of VFX used. So our Bristol Scout is a, um, is a scratch built model. Uh, I did initially start with a, um, I think it was a 32 scale or a 48 scale plastic kit, but it, it, was, it was just too small. So I made this as a 24 scale scratch build. Uh, it was built entirely from um, balsa uh, and tissue with the exception of uh, the, the cowl here, which was made out of a deodorant uh, can top. Um, the, uh, the Lewis gun here is, um, was bought separately. I need to attend to that because it's not quite accurate because the Lewis gun doesn't, it has the infantry uh, uh, jacket on it that I need to take off and make it more similar to, um, to this here, but I actually built this before I built <laughs> the uh, the Lewis gun, so I need to go back a little bit to the uh, to the drawing board on that one and and um, and bring the the gun in line with the other. Um, but yeah, this is um, this was my first attempt at a scratch built model, and I was I was really happy with it. It was. Um, it was great fun. You may see uh, the the green uh, the green section. I've got the front there. That's that's really just for my tracking uh, for for any end on views that we've got. By having that trackable, I can then on, in post production I can uh, I can get my rotary engine, which which this doesn't have, uh, but I can then attach the the, uh, the rotary engine um, video to make that uh, more realistic at the front. It does have a propeller as well, but um, with it tracked, uh, the propeller and rotary engine obviously bolted together and, and they will be put on in post-production. So thanks so much for tuning in to um, watch us again. Um, please, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, follow us on social media and, and keep sharing this project. We really appreciate it. And of course, if you have any questions, please let us know and I'll address it in future videos. So in my next video, I'm going to be taking a little look at the whole history of the genre of World War One aviation movies um, from their peak up until modern times and, and really asking the question of, of what went wrong. 
and, and more importantly, um, what I am I'm trying to do about it with, with our own project. So um, please tune in for that and I will see you then.